guys, what's up? I got something a little bit different to show you today. This is the Pentax Q, and this was announced way back in 2011. I bought mine in 2012. And there are some pretty interesting things about this camera, especially this first generation original Q. Now the first interesting, or you could say crazy thing about this camera was the original launch price. Now this has a 1 over 2.3 inch sensor just your typical small um, compact camera sensor, even smaller than the 1 over 1.7 inch you see in kind of more high-end compacts. But despite that, this camera was priced at $800 as a kit with this 8.5 millimeter lens, which works out to about 49, 50 millimeters with the crop factor. Now that is nuts. I mean, that was up there with the Micro Four Thirds Olympus pin cameras of the time, several DSLRs. Now this camera did not stick around long at that $800 price point. I actually bought this for $200 with the lens. But that price is reflected in the build quality. Now this camera has a full magnesium shell all the way around. The dials and controls feel really tight. Just a really nice sturdy feel to it despite the size. Now this thing is just tiny. I really do think it's still the smallest interchangeable lens digital camera ever made. Of course, it's pretty close to the size of the Panasonic GM1, which is a much more fully featured camera in terms of image quality, but it's still pretty cool they're able to make it so small, and you still get a hot shoe, and you get this really cool pop-up flash. Now look at that. Look at that mechanism. Pretty cool. It's kind of like a little party trick. You pop that thing out, and right away people are talking about it. <laughs> there are other couple interesting things about the body. You get this quick function dial in the front. You can assign this to different color profiles. You can assign it to filters. I have it assigned to aspect ratios because I shoot raw exclusively and I don't really care about filters or color profiles. Now another nice feature is you get a movie mode that allows for full manual control of shutter speed, aperture, ISO. Now this is something I couldn't even do with my Pentax K52S DSLR. So for that reason, it, it's kind of a fun little small camera for tooling around in video uh, if you want to experiment with different shutter speeds and that kind of thing. It's 1080p, 30 frames per second. You can get up to 1080p, 30 frames per second with this, which isn't bad. In addition, you get mechanical in-body image stabilization in video, which is pretty cool. You get interval still shooting and interval movie shooting built into the camera. You get highlight warnings, shadow warnings, and like I said, you get in-body stabilization. Um, despite the small controls on the camera, it's actually pretty easy to work with. You have all the buttons you need and they're laid out pretty logically. You even get an infrared sensor on the front and on the back to use with the remote, which is good because Wi-Fi um, is not available on this camera, it's just too old. So, image quality. Actually, this is probably the best 1 over 2.3 inch sensor uh, implementation I've ever seen because you do get that raw control. It is a good quality Sony Exmor R BSI backlit uh, sensor and you get 12 pretty good megapixels out of it. An advantage of such a small camera like this is you can carry around a tiny little tripod, really something pocket size like this, and you can set it up quickly and, and take the ISO down all the way to 125 and get really crisp shots just at longer shutter speeds. There are actually a decent number of lenses for it. I used to have the, uh, the O2 standard zoom lens with this, which was about a 28 to 80 equivalent. I sold it to a friend who bought a Pentax Q body only. I have the standard prime on this, which is about a 50 millimeter equivalent f1.9, so it's fast enough to get a little bit of bokeh. Roxy, shut up! I have the standard prime on this lens, and it's a 50 millimeter equivalent f1.9. That's enough to get a decent amount of bokeh. I'll go ahead and show you some sample shots. Now if you look at my channel, I have a video showing how I make some peppers from my garden back in Texas. I'll link it below. 
that was filmed exclusively on the Pentax Q, so that'll be a good indication of video quality. But at the end of the day, this camera is just about having something tiny and very flexible and fun to shoot with. Image quality is pretty far down on the list. It's not bad. It's a little bit better than you'll get with a cell phone, but it's not going to be like what you get from a Micro Four Thirds or, or APS-C. It's the sensor is just too small to get that um, to get that color depth, to get that gradation, uh, subject separation, low light. It's just not going to get you there, even if you shoot at ISO 125 all the time. But it's an exceptionally fun camera to shoot with, and the fact that you can adapt lenses to it and you get like a 5.6x crop factor, so you can stick on vintage uh, telephoto lenses and just get like ridiculous shots of the moon. You could even use this for astrophotography if you were really careful with your processing. But if you're looking at one of these, I'd say go for the original because you get that just completely overbuilt magnesium body on the camera like this. The later ones all went to plastic and they just don't have that, um, that X factor to them to make them a little bit more interesting and fun to shoot with. So yeah, this is the fun and curious Pentax Q. Even though it's my least capable camera, I keep it around just because it's fun to shoot with and it's fun to go around with just because of its size. It kind of disappears on you. It's held up pretty well after all these years. The strap is kind of crumbling apart. The felt is from moisture, I believe. The black is just kind of coming off. But aside from that, it basically looks like new. It's held up well. All right, guys. Well, I hope this was interesting. It's a little bit different, kind of a retro review for you. Uh, Hope you liked it. Thanks for watching.